coming to you live from Purdue University with our Science of Nutrition Zip Trip. We have students all over the country watching today's program, and one of the schools that's joining us right now is all the way from New York, Port Jervis Middle School. Hey guys! And right here in the studio, we have students joining us from Tecumseh Junior High. Hey! <laughs> Go Broncos! Today in the hot seat, we have joining us Bay High School in Arkansas, Nancy Hanks Elementary in Indiana. We all eat, right? Yes. Yeah. Lots and lots of different kinds of foods. So what are some things you know about eating healthy? Did you know that there are guidelines to help us make nutritious choices? That's what today's Zip Trip is all about. The science behind our nutrition and the scientists who ask important questions about our health. We'll meet a scientist studying how our senses like taste, touch, and smell connect to what we eat and what makes us feel full. And we'll go live to a test kitchen on Purdue's campus to meet a nutrition scientist and her students. Lastly, calcium is known for giving us strong bones, but how much of it do we need? We'll talk to a scientist whose work has helped solve this very important question. This is my plate. This is my plato. This is my plate. There are many nutrition scientists working here at Purdue University, and joining me now is one of them, Robin Tucker. Hi, Robin. Hi, Jessica. How are you? I'm doing well. How about you? I'm great. I'm really excited to be here. So, Robin, you work in an area of nutrition research that's really interesting with an unusual name. That's right. I'm a graduate student here at Purdue, mm -hmm. and I work in the Laboratory for Sensory and Ingestive Studies. And we study a lot of different things, but one of the, the cooler things we study is the science of flavor. So I noticed that our students here in the studio have apples and apple juice. That's right. What's that about? So they're going to take part in a sort of a smaller version of a study that we might do in the lab where we look at the different properties of foods mm -hmm. and how that might influence your appetite or feelings of hunger and fullness. So Robin, what do we do? Okay, so what I'll ask you to do before you start is to ask yourself how full you feel right now. Okay. And then so you'll take some of your juice, maybe uh, I don't know, a quarter or a half of your juice box that we have here in the studio. Okay. Drink that. Ask yourself after that how full you feel. And then eat your apple and ask yourself how full you feel after that. Um, this is a cool example of some of the, the things that we can do. We can measure um, how hard someone's muscle is contracting when they're chewing the food. Oh, wow. Um, we can count how many times they chew the food as it's in their mouth. And that gives us an idea of how much work they're doing to process uh, a food in the oral cavity. So, we just had an email question come in for you, Robin. And this is from St. John Lutheran School in Indianapolis, Indiana. Robin, what if you have food allergies to something on my plate, like vegetables? Well, it's very rare that you're allergic to all vegetables, so there may be certain things that you do need to avoid. Okay, let's check in with Emily in our hot seat for a question. Emily. Over in the hot seat, we want to know what type of food do you have to eat the most of in a day? People are really able to, to do well on many different kinds of diets, mm -hmm. and, and variety is really what's going to get you a balanced diet. Note the following necessary food. Milk, the best bone building food for all ages. Oranges, an excellent source of vitamin C. Well, how many of you have seen a nutrition facts label? Do you know what I'm talking about? You know, those rectangular boxes on the side of your food? Let's connect now live with a scientist who studies the fiber you'll find listed on these labels. Everyone, let's wave and say hello to Sybil Kranz. Hi, Sybil. Hi, Jessica. Hi, Mary. Hello. And where are you guys today? Can you tell us about that? Yes, we are on the Purdue campus in the metabolic kitchen. So what you see here are some cooking stations where some of the test foods for research are being made. Cool. And can you tell us about the research that you're doing about children and their food choices? Yes, so about 10 years ago I started looking into diet quality in children and I learned pretty quickly that 
it seems that the foods that are high in fiber, such as fruits, vegetables, and whole grains, are also high in other nutrients that children need. All right, so for this study, we invite preschool age children to come to our lab and taste test different foods. You can see we have colored potatoes, we have granola bars and colored plates. And we ask the children a lot of questions and they answer us with smiley faces. So mm -hmm. they can say they like it very much, it's okay, or they really don't like it. Now the question is, how do you know how many grams of fiber are you eating or you're, you already have eaten during the day? And the only way to figure that out is by reading the nutrition facts label that you mentioned a little bit earlier. So we brought in an example here. Okay. And we'll point you to it right underneath where it says total carbohydrates. Uh -huh. There it says dietary fiber. So first off, don't think that you have to change all of your foods to get enough fiber. You can make a lot of really simple substitutions. So here in the front, we have a tortilla that has less than one gram of fiber. And here in the back, it looks exactly the same. This tortilla has about eight grams of fiber. I hear we have um, some students in our audience, in our studio, who have a question for Sybil and Mary. Who does? You do? Yes. Uh, how long have you been experimenting? How long have you been experimenting? Oh, we've been experimenting with these young kids, or I have been in, in my research groups, for about eight years. Fiber is only one area of nutrition that scientists here at Purdue are studying. They want to know more about several of the vitamins and minerals we consume. Now let's meet a scientist who's trying to find out more about a mineral you may have heard of, calcium. For this segment of our Ziv Trip, we have Dr. Connie Weaver joining us here in the studio. Hi, Connie. Hi. Thanks for having me here. Uh, many of the students participating today are learning about scientific inquiry. It sounds like you've used the steps of forming a hypothesis, developing a study, collecting data, and then reaching a conclusion. You had several questions about calcium needs, right? Right, and the main one was how much calcium do we need to grow the biggest, strongest bones when we're in that rapid period of growth? So they have to eat everything we provide them. Everything's weighed out before they eat it. Mm -hmm. We give them a lot of education about their health and other things at Purdue. Here's the dietitians who are weighing out every single thing that they're gonna eat so we know how much calcium and how much protein and et cetera. You can see we have fun at camp too, and we learn weight-bearing exercise is also important for bones. Now, do boys absorb calcium as much as girls? Is well, there a we, difference there? We asked that question in Camp Calcium. We thought because bone, uh, the bones in boys are big, grow bigger than the bones in girls, that they might need more calcium, but they didn't. They use really? calcium more efficiently. First email question for you. Uh, this is from Lakeview Elementary School in Bloomington, Indiana. Is it okay to eat unhealthy once in a while, like one morning have a donut instead of oatmeal? I ask myself this every day. <laughs> <laughs> of course, your body has a lot of resiliency, but we can't do it too often. Um, if someone breaks the bone, should the person consume more calcium since they would not be getting less, since they would be getting less physical activity? Thanks again for joining us, everyone. We will see you on our next Zip Trip. Wave goodbye. Bye.